What's up, guys? Fun night. I was going to say another, another five contracts. I mean, uh, do the matchmakers push back, or is it tough to go, you know, we got to find five spots? No pushing. No pushing tonight. No, I mean, when you, I mean, this is what the show's about. I don't give a fuck if we give out 55 contracts. I mean, if the kids come in and perform and do what they're supposed to do, that's what we're here for. We're here to give out contracts. And uh, everybody that fought tonight deserves a contract. What? Look, there were a couple fights I was like, Jesus, I'd give out two contracts, you know? If kids fought. So that, that first fight was an absolute war. Um, you know, the, the Amanda girl came to fucking win. You know, you could tell how much it meant to her to be here and to try to win that fight. And, uh, you know, they both fought their ass off. But, I mean, there's no doubt Denise dominated, looked great, and, you know, um, you know, she's six and one now, and she's not only is she tough and durable, but she's talented. Yeah. Were any of them, I mean, were they all automatics to you? Because I thought the same thing. First three, automatic. Darius, kind of a weird ending the way it ended, so I wondered what you would think about that one. So uh, he's standing in there. He told me he was going to do that. Yeah, he said, he said uh, nobody, so first I was in the back. He came out and asked the matchmakers where I was when he's standing in the octagon. And then I came out. And he said, nobody's going to stand in between me and my dreams. You know, everybody thinks that I'm this weight, that weight. I couldn't hear everything exactly that he was saying. He's like, I'm going to smash this dude right now. And he literally did what he said he was going to do. How do you not bring that guy in? Not to mention the fact that he's a three-to-one underdog in that fight. You know? I mean, if, if, you know, a lot of these kids out there bet all these parlays and stuff on these fights. If you're betting parlays, man, you should be betting on Tuesday nights because a lot of these odds makers got these fights blown way out of proportion. Nobody on Tuesday night is a three-to-one dog. Nobody. You, you, you can't handicap fucking heart and determination and how bad somebody wants to win. Every kid that comes into this show on Tuesday night, it is their dream to fight here. You can't handicap that. It's fucking impossible. So if you like betting parlays and you're a sick degenerate, Tuesday night is your night. Let me tell you. You'd have made some money tonight. So do you recommend these fighters come call you out and, uh, uh, before they fight, like the way Darius did? or would you uh, No, you don't have alone? to. Listen, you don't even have to fucking talk. Just come out and fight. You know what I mean? If you come out and do what all these kids did tonight, um, I mean, look at this kid Cameron. I, I told him his nickname should be the future now. I don't know if he has a nickname, but wow, how technical he was in that fight. He fought a guy, don't let the five and one fool you. That guy's got 22 amateur fights. And uh, that guy's so good that sometimes he starts goofing around and playing with people. He, you know what I mean? Because Sean said, I, I, I love this kid, Kim, but he's so good in so many levels above everybody else, he starts playing with people. After two minutes into the fight, I said, he better not fucking play with this guy. And, uh, wow. Yeah. He had the viral moment. Was that kind of the standout, the standout athlete for you, Cameron? I mean, with that huge knockout that he had, was he kind of the standout of everybody tonight? Yeah. Yeah, probably. And you talked about the youth as well. I wonder, do you feel like this is kind of a shift, maybe, not only in your philosophy, it just shows the sport? I mean, because it's crazy. Like, now you got these 20-year-old kids that were, like, eight when they realized they wanted to be a UFC fighter, and they've been yeah. training since they were, you know what I mean? So it's like, even though they're 20 years old, it's not like back in the day where they had a couple years of high school wrestling or something. A hundred percent. Yeah, it's, it's night and day. You, you, you had, you know, if you think about when I got into the game, you had Chuck Liddell, who wrestled and did some kickboxing, you know, and, and Matt Hughes, who wrestled and then started to train with Militich, and Robbie Lawler, who had great hands, and, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a completely different game today. And like I said, five years ago, I wasn't signing 21-year-olds. I wasn't signing 22-year-olds. There's no way. You had to be 25 or 26 years old, have a good record, and uh, be well-rounded. And then you see, you know, kids like this kid Cameron, the two girls we saw fight in San Diego a couple weeks ago. I mean, that, that's what you're starting to see now. I wanted to ask you if you got a chance to listen in to Sean O'Malley on the mic tonight, what you thought of his performance, and do you want to see him do some more commentating? No, I, I didn't hear it, but, uh, you know, I'm sure he did fine. <laughs> I didn't hear it. Uh, last thing for me, I just want to follow up over the weekend. Have you had a chance to check in with Kamaru Usman yet and see how he's doing and all that? We talked. He's in great spirits. And, you know, uh, obviously he wants to rematch bad. Um, and, uh, you know, but he, he said, I can't tell you the weight that's been lifted off me. You know, there's a lot of pressure that goes along with the run that he was on and breaking 
tying and breaking Anderson's record and, you know, all that stuff. There's a, there's a lot of pressure. So um, he's looking forward to the rematch. And I saw Le uh, Leon today, too. You know, that, that kid's walking on water and couldn't be, you know, higher than he is right now. That's, that's the last question I was going to ask you is, has Leon given you an indication of his plan? Because I'm sure he wants to celebrate a little bit, you know, becoming a champion. But has he told you, like, how quick he wants to fight? And he's down. He's ready to defend. He's ready to, to take on whatever it is, you know. Um, he's going on a whirlwind media tour when he goes home. Um, you know, a, lo a lot of stuff changes when you get that belt. So his whole world's about to change in the next few weeks. And, uh, but he's, he's ready. He's ready for it. Yeah, talk about somebody that's had nothing but bad luck. And one of the things that we were talking about is that kid is, accept, you know, we, he accepted the Hamza fight two or three times, um, who was unranked. He's, ex, he, he's, he's legit, man. That, that kid is legit and was down to fight anybody, anytime, anywhere. He just had a really great string of bad luck. <laughs> Yeah. Going back to tonight, obviously you mentioned Denise 22, Cameron 21. Are we going to reach a point now where these young guys are so well-rounded that their prime is becoming earlier or they're as good as people whose prime would traditionally be 27? Yeah, no, I, I don't know. That's a great question because, you know, if this kid's this good at, at 21, 22, what's he going to look like when he's 26 and has experience here? Once you come in here and get this kind of experience, it's a whole nother level. So, uh, Tonight was obviously, I, you can't even call it a good test for him because he was a, over two to one underdog. T tonight, that kid shined, and we're going to find out, you know, what he does over the next. He's going to be fun to watch. But even for those younger guys, it's almost more interesting, right, because traditionally those people would still be on the regional scene fighting in front of a few hundred people. To come onto a platform like this, it shows that they're mentally tougher than we're traditionally used to as well, right? 100%. For, to, to get through something like the contender – and the ultimate fighter, it's, it's, uh, you got to be not just talented. Obviously, talented gets you on the show, but you have to be physically and emotionally badass. You mentioned about the fighter with 22 amateur fights. I know he lost tonight, but I'm curious if you actually have a take on that. Should guys, younger guys, look to have more amateur fights, or do you think that those kind of waste time, you're not getting paid for them? What's your take on amateur fights? I'm not a big fan of amateur fights because the guys don't get paid to fight them. But, I mean, if you look at, um, you, know, you know, Kim, the guy had 22 fights, but it didn't help him tonight. So it's pretty much like whatever is best for that person individually, I guess, right? The, the, the problem with this sport is, is that anybody can win on any given night. Anybody can win. So um, I don't know. You know, that, that's your own personal preference. If you feel like you want to get a bunch of amateurs under your belt and get more well-rounded, you know, work on some holes in your game, whatever it is, before you try to get in the UFC, that's totally up to you. With Kamaru and Leon, both of them have said they want to fight in England for that third fight, and that would obviously be huge. Would that be the sort of thing that you'd go back to when Bisping fought over there, that you'd have to hold it at 4 a.m., or are those days kind of behind us and you can have it prime time, local time, because of streaming and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, no, I would, I, the, first of all, th this thing is going to be so huge, not just for the U.K., but for Europe. And, uh, yeah, no, we would hold it prime time in the U.K. You start having second thoughts about Wembley yet, or you still think that could be an option? Um, we're, we're, we're looking at every option out there right now. We're looking at all the venues in England. That's awesome. Not just London. We're looking at every venue in England. We're looking at everything. Yeah, I think there's an indoor one in Cardiff that has 75,000. That has a roof on it. We're looking. <laughs> we're seeing what's available and what's not, and... You know, there's a lot of curfews and things you got to deal with in England, but we're, we're, we're literally, we literally worked on that today. Yeah. yeah. I know that market is obviously amazing at the moment, and you could probably do whatever you want over there, but having a fight like this with an English guy in the main event as champion, to get fend like, does this just take it to, this is where Canada used to be, this is now a hub of MMA? We put a fight night on sale at the O2, and it sells out in, in you know, minutes. Imagine what we can do with this thing. It's going to be massive over there. We, we weren't planning on going to England again, just like last time I left England. I mean, think about how long I've been working on the UK, how many years I've been working on the UK, and we're finally, we're finally where I hoped we would be someday. So um, we weren't supposed to go there. We are supposed to go somewhere else. I won't say it because it'll bum everybody out, <laughs> but um, I'm not going there now. 
and I'm going to England. I just got to figure out what, what, what arena. All right, cool. Uh, last thing for me, who was on the phone at the press conference after the fight on Saturday? What happened? Who was on the phone? Who FaceTimed you after? Usman. Okay, it was Usman. Yeah. Right, cool, thank you. Yep. Hey, Dana. Yep. Um, with five weeks in the books, um, is there a singular fighter so far that's really stuck out to you? With five weeks, yeah, I, it would have to be Cameron. You know, there's been some great fights, and I hate to overlook anybody. Um, you know, the, the two guys that pop into my head right now are Cameron and Joe Pfeiffer because the first show was so bad, and that kid just, you know, stuck out like a sore thumb. You know, it was, yeah, off the top of my head. Um, and then with so many contracts being given out, does that mean a roster purge is coming soon? <laughs> Uh, no, I haven't, I haven't even thought about that, actually. I, I don't think there's going to be a... We haven't had any discussions in matchmaking that there's too many, that we're, we're, we're too fat right now, so... Everybody's looking good. Plus, you got a lot of people retiring now, too. There's a lot of... We had matchmaking today, and there's a lot of, a lot of guys coming up uh, and, and fights that are heading up that we know are going to probably hang it up. Um, Tony, Fer Tony Ferguson versus Leach got announced. Um, what was the thought process of m matching those two guys up? What was the question? Uh, Tony Ferguson and Leach. What was the thought process of, uh, of, of matching those guys up? A uh, hell of a fun fight. <laughs> Should be a fun fight. And Tony wanted to fight uh, a weight class up. So that was the fight that we thought would be fun. And both guys were ready to do it. And both guys wanted to fight each other. Cool. And then finally for me, um, Paulo Costa. Have you met with him um, for a new contract yet? I know that he's been looking for one um no no but we'll get it figured out thank you yeah all right you talk about this 21 year that, that came in tonight and got a contract you know you guys are breaking records you know you said this is like something that you never thought you would do before you never thought you'd sign september 20th week nine of this you guys have the 17 year old that's coming yeah. in how much pressure is going to be on this kid to try to make an impression for you guys when you guys weren't even sold on 21 year olds no you're right that's a that's a great question um the uh, yeah, the pressure is going to be huge for that kid, and if we sign that kid, I mean that kid's got to be the youngest ever. I think Vitor was 19 yeah. when Vitor got signed, and how old was uh, Macy? How old was she? Sage Northcott was 18, I think. There you go, Sage. There you go. Yeah, so we'll see. And Listen, if he can fight his ass off, I don't care if he's nine. <laughs> he's fighting a seven and one guy, so I mean, he's not getting a, he's not getting an easy fight. By Nobody him. does. Nobody gets easy fights. It's it's uh, it's one of the things that we were talking about today. Like like when Leon was saying, "Oh man, Nate Diaz is, is uh, you know they should be giving Nate Diaz the, the, this easy fight, and they should be doing this and that." That's not what we do here. That that just that's that's not what we do. If you, when you come here, you're fighting the absolute best. And the thing about the Contender Series is you're fighting the absolute best out there that are unsigned in your weight class. The best versus the best. And look at how that plays. It's a pretty fucking simple formula when you're in the fight business. When you put the best against the best, I mean, look what happens. When's the last time we had a shitty fight? Like, I was just telling these guys in matchmaking today, I did, if you don't know, um, leading into San Diego. And, you know, you have these fucking morons on the Internet that just start, they start posting, oh, this is a fucking Apex fight. You should have left this fight at the Apex and all this shit. I rolled out of San Diego like this. <laughs> See you later. It was, uh, you know, that card was fucking incredible. I mean, if you were there, it felt like a pay-per-view uh, being there that night in the arena. So, I mean, when's the last time you left a UFC event and went, meh? It just it hasn't happened in a very, very long time. And I guess the last, last question, I guess a moment to kind of be, to show your, your proudness. You know, you were seeing these kids, these 21-year-olds, these 17-year-olds, they grew up and they grew up in the sport that always had the UFC. How proud does it make you to see the growth of these kids now that have started, just like you talked about the Randy Coutures earlier. These kids have came into the sport now with the UFC always there as an example of what these kids are striving for. Is that, is that a moment of pride for you? Yeah, there's so many things that, that I'm proud of um, that we've done in, in the sport. And what I'm really excited about is think about this, right? We've, 
What, what year do we build the PI? 16, 17? Huh? Yeah, like five years ago. We've already done two expansions over there, and we built this place over here, right? Now, look at what's going on in China, right, with, with, with the, the PI there. I'm building a PI in Mexico. I'm building a PI in Puerto Rico. I'm building a PI in Africa, right? Wait till these are all done and in place, and then think about the next, next seven years af after that thing's built, right? And think about this sport in another 10 or 12 years, where it's going to be, how big it's going to be. And this is the shit that I was saying 10 years ago. And uh, yeah, I mean, we've done it. Uh, we roll into Paris here pretty soon for our first ever event in Paris. And um, before you know it, I've been talking to you guys forever about Africa. We're going to be rolling into Africa pretty soon. And it's awesome, man. I'm, 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 I love it. I'm still having a blast. I love everything we're working on and everything we're going to do. Hi, Dana. Special night for Brazilians, four Brazilian fighters, uh, one contract. Uh, do you think we can have a contender series Brazil again soon, maybe 2023? In Brazil? No, here, but contender series Brazil, like 2018. Like a version of it in Brazil? No, here. Here. here, but just all Brazilians. All Brazilians? Yes, like in 2018, was here in Vegas. At the old what the fuck is wrong with me? Why do I not understand this question? <laughs> Season one, we did all Brazil. Yeah, 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 okay. Got it, got it, got it. I don't know. <laughs> took me long enough to figure that out to say I don't know. <laughs> After the first fight, what did you say to Amanda? She lost the first fight. What did you tell her? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, her, uh, I went over and I gave her her win money. I told her she's getting her win money. And I, what, what a fucking absolute war she put on and how much respect I had for her. And she said... <laughs> She said, I don't want the money, I want the contract. <laughs> and I said, uh, I said, listen, you keep doing what you're doing, you keep fighting, we're absolutely positively going to see you someday. So, um, yeah, I, I was very impressed with, with her performance tonight. Perfect. Last one for me. Uh, Gilbert Burns was saying that he, he was about to fight Masvidal, Jorge Masvidal was in the plan, was... Uh, does it make sense for you, Gilbert Burn, Burns against Jorge Masvidal, maybe December, maybe next year? Yeah, I like it. You like it? I love that. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> then I'll do it. Thank you. I, yep, thank you. I, I should, just one more day, another world to wait. Have you guys spoken to Colby? And can he fight with the legal stuff he's got going on, or is he going to be gone for a while? Do you know what's happening? Colby? Yeah. Yeah, no, Colby wants to fight. Colby wants to fight. He's ready to fight, and we're making plans for him here soon. Awesome. Thank you. Yep. Good? Thanks for coming, guys. Have a great night.